Welcome back to Enshrouded. Today I'm building this cozy hobbit forest house here behind me. And this is one of my best bases so far. It's full of so many hidden elements and little secrets and awesome building techniques and things. So I'm super happy with how it turned out. Hopefully you enjoy this build video and then stay tuned for the end for a full tour. So I've scoped out a beautiful spot here in the middle of the Revelwood Forest. I think it'll fit the vibe perfectly for what I'm going for. For those of you wondering on the map here, you can just travel up to the Revelwood Spire and then glide across this shroud and it's right over here. And this location just speaks Hobbit House. It's got a nice gentle hill here and this is how it is without any terrain modifications or anything. So this will be a perfect little hill to kind of back my build into. So with that said, let's get started on the build. I'm going to go to my blueprint and go to the 4M ceiling blueprint. And then we're going to select it to be out of the roughly cut stone here. And I want to kind of go right over to the edge of this curve in the terrain. Maybe something like... Let's see. Right there. And we're going to do one, two, three. And then one, two, three and a half. So it's going to be three and a half wide, essentially. And then by three of uh, these uh, ceiling blocks deep. And this will be the first large hobbit house. And the reason I'm doing this first, instead of building up the hill and then digging into it, is I reckon it might be a little easier to actually frame in the whole hobbit house, do the rooms I want and everything, and then afterward go ahead and put the dirt on top of it. So we're going to try that for this build and see how it goes. But with that said, I like the size of this and then I might do like a little pathway that winds up and above it. A slightly smaller house up here and then a little cottage on top and then possibly a big tree that I build out of like terrain blocks or farm soil to look like bark. That could kind of wind up and sort of, uh, I don't know, give a border to this side of the build. So with that, I'm now going to take my half timbered block. And we're going to go ahead and start outlining the front face of the Hobbit house here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that quick, and then you can pause the video to see uh, how I outlined it. I'll do a nice front view here so you all can uh, follow along. And then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so I have the rough outline here of the front view of the larger Hobbit house here. And you can pause the video, like I said, if you'd like to copy it here, take a screenshot or something. But I'll just walk through it quickly. It goes from this edge of the foundation here. And between this edge and the edge of the window is essentially six blocks. And then a little window that is two blocks up from the bottom. And then a little two by two window cut out. And then between this edge of the window and the edge of the door is four blocks. And then four blocks wide by five blocks high for the door opening. Another four blocks into the edge of this window. And this window is three blocks high by four blocks wide. And again, up two blocks from the bottom. And then another four blocks from the edge of this window to the other edge of the foundation here. And then you can just copy the layout for sort of how I outlined the top section there. So with that said, it's now time to start working on a few little details on the front of it to start making it look really nice. I'm going to start making like a little porch just out of the normal stone off the front here. Just so I have a little bit of uh, area to work with. I'm going to make this look much better later on. Uh, but for now, it'll at least just have something here. There we go. Just something to kind of outline that. And we'll kind of free place a nice little path coming down from it here. Which will look really nice later on. I'm now going to take my tarred shingle roof block and we're going to do some really cool details around the outside here that'll really bring it to life here. So we're going to skip the bottom corner and up one from the bottom. We're going to go ahead and place a wall of these blocks all the way up to the top corner, but we're not going to place it on the top corner. So again, up one from the bottom corner and then stopping one block below the top corner there. And then along the bottom row here, we're going to go ahead and place uh, four of them, just like that. We're creating the rounded door effect here. And then along the top, I'm going to go ahead with my stone shingle roof blocks here. And we're going to go ahead and place one, two, right in the center like that. 
And then go back to the tarred shingle roof blocks and right on both sides of those, we're going to place one and then two. Just like so. And this is going to create the outline for the door. Some of you have commented you don't see these nice little wood carvings that happen with the tarred wood roof. That's because you have your voxel details turned off. So just turn those on to any setting besides off and you should see these start taking shape. And now we're going to work on the windows in a very similar way. We're going to go ahead on the bottom, place one, two tarred wood blocks, skip the corner, and place one, two going up and skipping the top corner. So that'll be for this window. And then on the very top, we're going to switch to our stone shingle roof block and go one, two, three, four. And what this is going to do, the reason we're not doing it out of the tarred wood all the way around is because if we did it out of the tarred wood, it would fill in these corners. And I really like this like rounded effect around the window, both inside and outside. So I kind of like leaving it like that. Just some variation to have the little uh, stone shingle roof block right above uh, to sort of shed the water off the little window there. So same thing for here. We're going to go ahead with the tarred wood. And we're going to place one, two, three, four across the bottom. Skip the corner. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then along the very top, I'm going to go ahead with one, two, three, four, five, and oops, six right up there in the corner. So here's the outline around the windows now. And now we can just go ahead and take some wooden window frames and go ahead and fill these in. And for this one, I'm going to go ahead and place one here and then rotate the last one and place it here. This will just kind of give the effect that they're like little uh, windows that can open and like one of them's open, one of them's closed, just to add some cool texture and stuff. And now I kind of want to create a planter box on the outside of this window. And for that, I'm going to go ahead and destroy these four bottom roof blocks here first. We're going to go to the hammer and go to the single terrain block with flower soil. And I'm going to go ahead and replace these. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, and four more on the very top of them. So one, two, three, and four, just like so. Then we're going to go back to the tarred shingle roof block. And I want to place two on the bottom and then two on these inner corners, just like that. And then going back to the half timbered roof block here. I'm just going to go ahead and place one temporarily right there to be able to place one, two, and then destroy that. And then go to just the single stone block here. Um, go ahead and do something like that, maybe. It kind of rounds out the sides, has a little bit of flowers in there. Um, maybe it's too busy looking, but I think it looks pretty cool for now. All that's left here is to go ahead and add a door. So I'm just going to use this darker door right here, which I think looks really nice being trimmed out there by the roof blocks. And I also wanted to go ahead and fill it out a little more with the greenery. So we'll just go ahead and place like two more flower soil there over the window box. I think that looks pretty nice. And then you can also add vines to this type of material for the half timbered block, also the rough cut stone block. You can kind of see some of them forming on the sides here. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's working for me on the front. I kind of tried this a bit earlier and I seem to be able to get like little flowers and little sprouts of grass, which is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and at least kind of do that in a couple spots. But you can see here that it does work for me on the back side. I'm getting some vines and stuff just like that. So it's just really finicky. It all depends on what side you placed it on. I found that the side that was forward here just wouldn't get any vines no matter what I did. Uh, so yeah. That's a bummer, but I'll definitely use the vine trick on walls when I can, and when they will show up. You can see there it's just a piece of grass. It just really depends on the location. Yeah, with that, I'm really, really liking the front of this hobbit house here. So now I've been working on outlining the rest of the hobbit house here. We have a little door here, which is going to turn into a secret door to go into the tree trunk of the big tree I'm going to build over here. And then I've been continuing the roof out from just this front face of the hobbit house with more of the half timbered blocks. I've done another little uh, half jut out here. Um, so essentially a full a full jut out over here, which is going to become the base of the tree. A little half jut out over here, which is going to become the fireplace and chimney over there. And I brought the roof out to here. The top section goes all the way out to the end here. 
And then for these sections, I'm just going to kind of continue bringing the roof lines in. Uh, and I think, let's see. I'm going to try some stuff here. I'm going to turn off X and just kind of bring this in about to there. And then I'm going to, as you can see, I've kind of uh, deleted the corners of each of those. So now I'm just going to kind of take the, uh, let's see, this blueprint, the door frame blueprint, with the same blocks here, and just go something like that on both sides. And I think this will be nice because it will give me slightly higher ceilings just in this area to have a nice area for the fireplace and maybe a little dining table here and have enough room and height to be able to hang a chandelier. And I think I'm going to do the same thing over here. And then the back side will just curve up, and I think I'm going to mirror image this little uh, wall here over here in possible stone. Uh, so yeah, we'll do that, and then I'm also just going to go ahead and start doing some terraforming over on this side. So we're going to go to the terrain, and we're going to go to the 2 meter cube, and then out of dirt here. And then I'm just going to essentially build this entire side up with these four meter cubes here. Uh, all the way kind of outlining the chimney here. And then essentially, let me just create a quick outline for y'all here. I'm just gonna kind of back it up into the hill in like a nice rounded fashion here. And essentially just take up this entire area up to about here and fill it up to the top here with these two meter, or yeah, the two meter cubes here. And this will essentially create the next level of grade for the next part of the build. So now we have something that looks like this here. You can see I've brought this entire little yard area up with those terrain blocks, leaving some space over here. I've brought the entire roof all the way around the house is finished. So this basically just mirrors this. And then this back side here is a perfect mirror image of this front side here. Except for the fact that I just used the rough cut stone instead of the half timbered for the back wall. And here is just a little chimney. I might raise it up or lower it a little bit uh, when I get the final grade of the terrain later on. But for now, I think it's looking pretty good. If we go inside here, this is how things are looking now. Just got some pillars here. I might choose to kind of section things off with the walls and do a full interior here at some point. But that's how the hearth and little fireplace area is looking so far. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with it. So now I'm going to start outlining a second Hobbit house that's going to be a bit smaller than this first one right over here. And then we'll kind of bring the forest cabin up out of the top of that Hobbit house. And then the top of this Hobbit house will become sort of the yard and some farm fields and things. So to start outlining this Hobbit house, I'm going to go into my building here. We're going to go back to the 4M ceiling piece. And then turn off X here, and I'm going to back it right up so you can see the very last little square of this build. So right up to that, and right along the side of the chimney there. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to come out one, and then two, turn X back on to get the halfway point, and then go ahead and destroy that first one. So this second hub house is just going to be two and a half wide by two deep for now. So you can see that it's just one of these ceiling pieces set back from the front of the existing Hobbit house, and then one of these ceiling pieces in between uh, the existing Hobbit house and then this one. So there we go. That's the rough placement for that, and then I can kind of be terraforming a little path that comes up here later on. But I think right now I'm going to go ahead and get a front design done on this Hobbit house. Again, similar to the way I did it on this one, but I think for this I'm just going to do a door right over here and then just a super small window over here so rather than having a door with two windows on both sides it'll essentially just be like this two-thirds of the hobba house over here without this bigger window so let me get that done and then you can pause the video to copy it if you'd like so here we go this is the outline of the smaller hobbit house here Again, you can just pause the video. I decided to do the front out of the flint stone uh, rather than the half timbered block I may end up changing that later, but I figure it'd be cool to use the flintstone in our build palette just from the greens and it just fits the forest so nicely. 
So I might use some of it on the house that I'm going to be building above, so I think it'll look right when everything's done, but if it doesn't, I'll just switch it out again for the half-timbered. But similar idea here, we just have four blocks from the edge to the edge of this little window. This is the same little window as the side here. Again, it's pretty identical to, again, just the first two-thirds of this hobbit house. And then between the window and the door, we have four blocks. We have the door, and then six blocks between the door and the very edge. And then I went ahead and continued, again, the sides in the rough cut stone, and then the roof with the half-timbered block. And I only came out halfway here, because now it's time to start outlining the foundation for the cottage that will be above. And I'm planning on having everything here connected, so there's going to be a little secret door in this hobbit house that then goes up essentially through here. Uh, I'm going to do stairs up into this hobbit house, and then this hobbit house will go into the foundation of the cottage so that everything is interconnected with little tunnels and things. I think that would be really cool. So with that said, I'm going to go into my door frame blueprint right here. Again, select it to be out of the rough cut stone. Go ahead and rotate it and sit it down right there. That's going to be the first piece of the foundation, and we're going to start making this little secret door passage between these two hobbit houses here. So now that we have that done, I'm going to go to my little stair blueprint here. Go ahead and rotate it. Something, something like this. Let's turn X off for easier. There we go. And then I'm going to go to my little uh, two meter cube here. And we're going to take out this, this. Um, actually, I want it to be one up from the bottom. So that, 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 and that. There we go. And this is going to be my little door that comes up through here. And this will all be covered underground when I finish the terraforming later. So now with that said, I want to just destroy these blocks individually. Just to make things feel high enough. And I'll trim it out all really nice later. So I won't have to worry about that. Now I'm going to take my little 2 meter ceiling piece. And just fill in this little section right here. So that looks quite nice. I'm going to go back to the stairs again. And I'm going to continue them down right over here. Just so that we're going to start kind of closing in our little tunnel over here. And I think I'm just going to use the rough cut stone for this because I think it'll look nice. Maybe we'll use the half timbered for the roof of it, but we'll have to see here. So let's just go ahead with this here. Back it into there like that and then... Do one more right here. Perfect. And then the walls can be the rough cut stone. So I'll just go back to the wall piece. Select that to be out of the rough cut stone here. And we're just going to outline. I was debating having this be just two blocks wide. It's like a super tiny secret entrance. But I think I am going to do the full four blocks wide. In which case, let's just back this out to here. And do something like that on both sides here. So... Another one right here. This might be a little tricky. Want it to snap right there, I think. Yep. And then this one to continue up right to there. And then we can kind of hand fill in the rest of the part. So I'll just put like one there. We'll go ahead and put one right over here. Just like that. And we're definitely getting here. And now I'll just go ahead with like the single blocks here out of the rough cut stone. Go ahead and fill it in the rest of the way here. So just like three, three, and three. Maybe a fourth one in there. We'll see how the textures end up looking. So uh, let's see here. And there we go. And then a couple up in here. Let's just go ahead with like three like that. And then again, one, two, and three. And here we go. We have our little entrance from this hobbit hole into this one here. And then this piece right here will essentially mark the foundation of the larger house. So now I'm going to go to my little two meter wall blueprint here. And we're going to rotate it and continue this up by, let's see, one, two. Go ahead and rotate this again. And then rather than right on the edge here, I'm just going to phase it in there. So it'll be one, two, and then across here, three and four. Go ahead and rotate it again. 
and then kind of phase it right into the edge there. One, two, and then again for three, four. And I think I'm going to do uh, uh, eight wide over here because this is going to be sort of an L-shaped house here. And this looks so cool when the terrain comes up to it. So that's how it's looking right now. Uh, and then I want to do, let's see, it's rotated again. Let's do it right over here. And leaving the corner free, we'll go right there. Perfect. So we're just going to do one, two... And for this I could go ahead and turn X on now just to make sure I'm snapping in the right places. Although X can sometimes be a little tough, so maybe we'll leave it off here. And then three, four, five, six. There we go. Perfect. We're going to rotate it again. And let's see if I can get up on this hill here. We can use Q in the scroll wheel to move the blueprint slightly farther away. And I'm going to do, again, phasing into the corner there. One, two, and then three, and four. Oops. That's the wrong spot. So four, right there. Just like so. And then rotate this again. Phasing it into the corner there. And we're essentially just going to continue this uh, side all the way across. Oops, that's the wrong spot for that one. All the way across until they meet in the corner right over here. And now we're left with something like this here. This is the outline for the foundation of the house. And is essentially two of these 4M ceiling pieces wide by five of them long. And then this little jut out part is three by two essentially. So just two of these wide and juts out one from the little five by two section here. And this will start looking amazing pretty soon. So now that we have this outlined, I'm going to kind of start working on connecting and integrating them. So we're going to go ahead and fill in this hobbit house here. Let's go ahead and fill in the side here the rest of the way back, just like so. And I'll continue filling up these pieces here with the half timbered block just right up to here. And then you can kind of see how things are going to start working. This is going to be this hobbit house. It's going to then have maybe a little stairway up into the cellar or the basement of the main house above it. And then you can also go into this house here. And that foundation piece will continue into the ground once I do some more of the terraforming. So I'm just going to kind of perfect things, kind of wall this section off, and then get back with you all shortly on what I end up doing to sort of outline this area. So here we go. I've gone ahead and closed in this wall over here. And I've also gone ahead and done a little floor over here and continued this foundation down by another two meters. So it's officially, uh, if we go into our four meter blueprint, it's officially one of these four meter walls high. Uh, rather than just half a wall high. So there we go. I've continued that down. You recognize this little door here. Continued the floor across the bottom. And gone ahead and just filled in all around the Hobbit house here. And I think this is starting to look really, really good. So now I'm going to start doing the staircase here. And how that's all going to work. And by the way, I've just left underneath this entirely hollow. I see no sense in building the terrain up to it because you're not going to see it anyway. So maybe later, but we'll see. <laughs> so now I'm going to go ahead and go to my little uh, 2M ceiling piece. Select that to be out of the roughly cut stone. And turn off X. We're going to go ahead and make ourselves a little landing platform for the stairs right here. Scroll over to the stair piece and go ahead and rotate it and let me put it right there. That's perfect. So it's going to go here. You're going to go up. I'm going to rotate this again and go right up to the top. I think something like this right here. And then this will essentially go up to the main floor of the house and then go down to there. And now I want to try to figure out what makes sense for a staircase that goes down into this hobbit section. Whether I do something maybe like this, where you can just pop up right there. That honestly does not look bad, and I could make it look really nice. So maybe I do something like that. And then I wall off this section or whatever. So yeah, you can kind of come down these stairs, head down into here, come up here, and go right up to the top. I kind of like that actually. Just nice and simple. 
So there's the stairs, and now I'm just gonna fill out down here uh, temporarily again with some more of the roughly cut stone right up to the stairs, maybe something like that, and then one of the blocks right over there. Yeah, this looks perfect here. And then I might even leave this open down into the Hobbit house and maybe put like a little uh, railing or something over here so you can kind of overlook down in. Uh, I don't know. We'll see what I end up doing there. But for now, it is time to start the terraforming process. Everything is now filled in and we can start bringing the hills up and actually start putting some dirt over these Hobbit houses now. So what I'm going to start doing is going to my terrain blueprints. We're just going to go to the 2M cube here. And I think in the big chunks, just like over here, where the foundation is exposed and things, we're just going to go ahead and like overlap it a little bit underneath it. Just so you don't see anything. And something... Yeah, just like that. So I start bringing this hill all the way out. And all the way back there. Perfect. And all the way across the side of the Hobbit house here. Just want to make sure I'm not having dirt accidentally poking in. But I don't know, something like that for now. Blend it back into this hill. So the big chunk parts of it, and then we'll do like over in here as well. Kind of come up on the foundation a little more. Uh, and just continue sort of terraforming and bringing earth up around. So I'll use blueprints where I can. Uh, and same thing over on this side, we'll kind of stack these blueprints up to about here. Sort of start rounding off the hill, and then for over the hobbit houses, you know, I can obviously start with like these blueprint pieces. Maybe right there. Um, right there. Slowly start kind of stacking them out. Uh, again, where I can use them. And then we'll just go ahead and, you know, either use the single terrain block or the little, uh, 1M cube section here to sort of start filling in around the area. So I'm just going to fill dirt all the way over these hobbit houses until I'm really happy with the way it looks. So we'll just use the dirt and then occasionally place a few little blocks of flower soil and things just to add a lot of interest. And then we'll start thinking about door placements for the house here and pathways and things like that. So here we go. I'm really quite happy with how this is turning out. I think it's coming along quite nicely. I know it looks really complicated maybe, but it's really not too hard. Again, I'm just using blueprints where I can. Especially I've been using a lot of the uh, the two meter, or the, sorry, the one meter cube for the terrain here. And I've also been enjoying the uh, disc one. Uh, so I've just kind of been using that to sort of flatten out the top of like this little hill over here. Just for some gardening later and stuff. And then in sections like this, where I'm kind of filling in around tricky spots like the chimney and stuff here, I've just been taking my time just with the little uh, single uh, terrain blocks here out of dirt and just going nice and slow just around the trickier pieces. One thing I did want to show you though on camera was how to create this nice looking front. You can see this hobbit house obviously is a little more janky right now, uh, whereas this one has this nice overhang. And again, it's not that tricky at all, but I just kind of have a really easy method. I just like to do um, essentially a terrain block at each of uh, these sections. So we're just going to go across the entire thing all around the outside. Just with these single terrain blocks. And then you can see here how it's already starting to create a really nice overhang there. Oops, I don't think I needed that one. Or maybe I did. There we go. And, uh, yeah, something just like that. That's already looking better. And then we're just gonna go up right on top of each of those, where there's like a little step up. And you can see now it's just creating this nice little overhang here. So you can see like there's a little step up, so we'll place one right on top of here. There's a little step down, one right there. And let's see, one right up in here. It, oh, it was right up there. Let's see. Might be a little easier up in this. We kind of climb up a little bit. Right there, there, and here we go. Just like that. There's a little step down. And there we go. We start creating this nice outline to the Hobbit House. This beautiful overlap there. And I do like how it's been working here on this uh, 
half timbered block. You can kind of still see a little bit of the steppiness of the uh, flint there. We can always just take a terrain block here and there and kind of fill in sections, you know, if we want to for kind of perfecting it. I may choose to do that. may even choose to kind of bring it out a little farther in spaces just to sort of, uh, again, create that freeform earthy effect so it's not too perfect kind of a thing. And then I've just been kind of using these single blocks again to uh, kind of start wrapping around the Hobbit house and just start making things look really, really nice. So I'm definitely very happy with how they've been turning out. Um, and then I can also, yeah, I can also just kind of go up here some of the flower soil like I was saying and uh, yeah in a few places like in between the hills or maybe like down in here go ahead and put a couple of these uh, flower soil blocks down create some nice little flower patches maybe at the front of the house here we could go ahead with a couple of them uh, I just think yeah there we go just to get a few flowers here and there so this is definitely taking shape I've got a bit more perfecting to do I think the big work with all the blueprints is now completed I think now I am just going to start taking my time and going ahead with all of the, uh, the little, uh, single blocks here, perfecting everything. But yeah, the rough shape is definitely here. You can see we have got a pathway kind of coming up here. And we'll do more of the pathway out of, like, you know, free placing these little stone blocks and things. I'm thinking I'll do, like, a stepped pathway kind of coming up here. And then possibly even a little deck coming off the house, and that's where the stairway is to the upper level. I've also just gone ahead and added a floor here with a little cutout for the stairs. And then gone ahead and covered this section down into the Hobbit house because I just thought it was a little cozier and nicer if it was covered. I just think that looks a little better. So yeah, I can kind of go up there, go down here. I've added my flame altar inside the house now, finally, since I think this is just a cool spot for it. It was a big hollow empty space underneath that uh, basement of the house anyway, so I figured, ah, why not just add a little jet out off the back of the house here. And another trick that someone in my Discord was saying is if you pay really close attention at the tip of my hammer there, there's that little tiny corner, uh, that little like crescent moon shape right on the edge of that circle there. If you make that facing, that, that's basically the direction you'll face when you spawn in. So whenever I fast travel to this flame altar, I'm facing just like this. And I can walk straight out into my hobbit house. So yeah, wherever that little tiny crescent is uh, facing, you can see it's not on any of the other sides. It's just on that one side, that little tiny crescent there. So that's a really awesome trick and it actually works. So yeah, just rotate your flame altar till that's facing the direction you want. And we can go right out into here. And I've also just placed a little tiny outline for the circle of my tree. This will be continuing up with farm soil as the bark for the tree, and we'll get to that shortly. But first, I want to finish this terraforming and then start working a little more on the house here uh, so we can get a sense of how the tree is going to come up and where the branches are going to be so that they're not uh, too much in the way of the house. But yeah, this is looking incredible. So for the house portion here, we're just going to go into the uh, 4M blueprints. And I'm going to select them to be out of the half-timbered blocks. And we're just going to go ahead and fill all the way around with some walls. And I'll probably be cutting out windows after the fact. Um, but we might do a couple of them right now. We'll see where we end up getting. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in all the way around. Like maybe this area right here could be a window. Um, let's see, something like that maybe. And then this will all be like a wall. I'm going to do a fireplace probably somewhere right in here. Uh, so I'm just going to have these be solid because of the kitchen area. And then we might have a window over here somewhere. I guess we'll see. Might have a window over here, kind of above the staircase. But this is actually going to be the other staircase to go up to the loft. So I think I'll leave that without a window for now. And I can also just scroll up here and use these little uh, half-wide pieces. It looks like I'll need some more timber, but I'm going to do like one of these, a window, and then like, yeah, to have like two bigger windows in the front here, and then a door over here out to a tiny little deck with some stairs going down. So here we go. This is close to what I had in mind. I've got two windows here in the front. Both are uh, four blocks wide. I've got the little door here, and then two windows at the back side here, just mirroring these front ones. A little tiny one over here because this is going to be the kitchen so maybe this will go over the sink or something 
And then I've just got a chimney. It's just four blocks wide by two blocks on the inside and then just surrounding it uh, by stone right now. So that's how it looks so far. Then we've got a little window here and a little one here. And then I went ahead and just mirrored that bottom staircase, but right on top of it to go up to the loft right here. And I always like to trim them out with some stone edges, so it always looks nice. And then on the outside here, I went ahead and also trimmed around the windows. I do have a video on windows, so feel free to check that out if you'd like more detail on how to use roof blocks like this. But now, I think I'm going to start working on the deck. So I'm going to go ahead and select my 2M ceiling piece. So basically, basically three of those wide right there, but just in by two blocks on both sides. And I can turn X back on, and we can do three more of them. Just like so, and I think that's a pretty good deck size. And then I want to just go to the little stairs here. And go ahead and put them... let's see. They're turning X off. Like right there, actually. That's perfect. That's kind of what I had in mind for a little deck and some stairs. And I can go ahead and kind of continue some little railings up just with the stone blocks I think um so I'll just kind of outline where those would go I don't know something like something like this for now yeah probably there's something on both sides of the stairs something on the corners there maybe I'll do it on the back corners as well but I think this will work out and then I can kind of just destroy these and replace them with the stone and just continue all the way down to the bottom there so something like that I'll kind of mess around with it a little more, but I think that's looking pretty good. And then I've just gone ahead and done the little trim around the door there. So now I'm just going to go ahead and throw a floor down up here that will become the loft. And then we can go ahead and start working on the roof. So here we go. I've laid down a floor now for the loft. And we're going to start working on the roof, which I'm going to do out of these roof tiles blocks. Uh, because I was debating between that and a tarred shingle roof. But the tarn shingle roof just does not mesh with the texture of the half timbered block quite as well and leaves like a weird ridge with some gaps in it. So I'm just going to use this one and again we're just going to kind of sit it down and forward to create this overhang. So rotating it again and then rather than being right on the top here we're just going to sit it down and out. And right there. And then I'm going to rotate it again. We're going to continue it out the back side here. Just sitting it down and out, go to this roof corner piece, and then push it down just like that. Go to this one again and fill in that little gap. Rotate this and put one there, and then we're going to start in from this side here. I'm going to do one there, rotate it. And then one right here. So again, pushing it down and out for the overlap. Gonna go to the inner roof corner and put it right there. Perfect. And now I'm gonna have two little jut outs for two little windows for the bedroom that's gonna be up here. And to do that, we're gonna first grab the roof pieces here. And you can see the blueprint underneath it from the floor. We're just gonna snap it directly in line with that blueprint, kind of phase it into there. And then same thing here, you can see there's just one little block missing right there. So we're just going to go ahead and do that so that there's a perfect blueprint width here in between them. And we're just going to do the same thing on this side because I think I want this to be uh, even on both sides for the little jut outs. So we'll do something just like that. Perfect. And then I'm going to go to the little 2 meter inner roof pieces. We can go ahead and... Zoom into my character a little to make this a little easier. And rather than snapping it just like I did there, we're going to actually phase it in on both sides. So then rotate it again and phase it in by one block. And then do the same thing over here. So phasing it in, rotate it, and phase it in. Just like so. So it's going to look something like that. And then we're going to just take the 2 meter roof pieces and... Uh, let's see if I can get them to, to snap over here. I might need to kind of step on the roof here for this. Just going to put one right there. And rotate it again. Put one, oops. I think one block back. Just like that. Perfect. And then same thing on this side. Now we have our little roof jet out pieces. 
Then we can head back inside here, up the stairs, and I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the ends of them with flintstone, uh, actually, because I just think it looks really nice. So we're gonna do the rough flintstone blocks. Go ahead and put one here, and rotate it, and put one there. Same thing on this side, and then we're gonna cut little windows out of them. So right in here, rotate it, and there. And we're gonna use this flintstone as well to make these jet outs here. But in the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the little 2 meter wall block and up 2 from the bottom. We're just gonna go and destroy this and that. And we're just gonna do the same thing over here to create our windows. So up 2 from the bottom there, and then another one up. Perfect. And then for the little jet outs here, I'm just gonna go ahead and select the... Ah, we do have upside down stair blueprints. There we go. So I'm going to select some of these, go ahead and place one there, and one like that. And same thing on the other side here, rotate them around, we'll place one there, and one there. Nice, and then this will have a overlap by one, so we'll just go ahead and select the upright blueprint again. And go ahead and place like one there, and then... Rotate around one right over here. And then we can just kind of fill in this middle section by hand, actually. So I'll just go to my single little roof blocks here. We'll just fill in like one, two, three, four. And I think that'll end up being the window. So we can just fill in along this bottom section. And yeah, perfect. That ends up working out well. We can also go ahead and fill in above these guys if we want to. And uh, maybe I'll end up filling down just to make things look consistent and nice here. Something just like that. Yeah, that'll do. The textures get a little weird at the bottom or maybe those little walls end up being out of the half-timbered blocks or something. But that looks nice and then I'm just gonna do the same thing on this side. And here's what it looks like from the outside when all the windows are trimmed out. I think it turned out beautifully. Again, here's what it looks like on the back side here. And I've just gone ahead with the single roof blocks and continued this roof across. I think it looks pretty nice. And I also really, really love the way that the flintstone kind of texture uh, meshes with the roof there. Kind of creates these little like corners and accentuates it. So I'm really, really loving that. And then I went ahead and just added the little top to the chimney over here. So definitely turning out beautifully so far. And last but not least, it's time to work on the big tree, which is going to be very tricky, no pun intended. Uh, but I really want to try to create like a spiral staircase around the middle of the trunk here. Create a trunk that kind of goes up. The spiral staircase will have a little doorway right here. So you can kind of go from there up the spiral staircase and then out onto the yard here and up into the house. So just another cool way of connecting everything. And then I'm hoping to kind of just build everything out of farm soil here. So I've kind of outlined a circle here with the rough cut stone. And we're just going to take the farm soil and go ahead and like place blocks all the way up. Basically just following this pattern. And you see how they kind of are like meshing together like that? That's exactly what I was hoping they'd do uh, to be able to not leave any gaps and things. And that looks pretty circular to me, and especially as we start continuing it up, so... Let's see, like, one there, there... It's gonna be tricky, I'll just have to keep, like, keep an eye on everything. Make sure I'm snapping things to the right points here. But I think this is working out. I think this is actually gonna work. This would be really, really cool. Never tried this before, but I think... I think I've just... I think I'm onto something here. Let's see. Yeah! And of course I'll kind of continue roots and stuff over here, so this little uh, stone foundation will all be hidden. But I actually think this is gonna work. Let me just keep continuing this little ring up a ways and see how it looks. Yeah, this is actually starting to look like a tree trunk. That is awesome. It looks kind of like a barrel right now, but man, it looks pretty round with the way the textures are kind of all meshing together. So I've gone ahead and just built it up the height of the hill, and so far, look at that. It's working out perfectly, and we've got plenty of room in there for a spiral staircase. 
So I think now I'm just gonna mess around with like coming out with some roots, maybe like a big one over here. Let's see. I have no idea how this is gonna work, but let's just try try to continue bringing this out maybe into the ground and stuff. Continue it all around here. Yeah, I think that's working out really well. I'll just keep making it wider. Maybe we'll just go ahead and do a full covering of the base here to start out with. And then I can kind of start bringing the roots farther down here. I have no idea how I'm going to do the leaves or how this is going to end up looking, but we're just going to try. This is a complete experiment, and if it works out well, I'll definitely be doing this in the future. Yeah, that's starting to kind of look like a root. We can just keep bringing them out and doing those. And then I'm kind of thinking something similar for the branches. Just kind of put some scaffolding around the tree and sort of have some branches. I don't know if I want it to be super big and tall, like some of these uh, really large ones, but a little bit fatter, a little shorter. And yeah, we'll just kind of see how this process goes. So here we go. That is definitely starting to look like the base of a tree, and I can keep tweaking it, keep bringing the roots out farther as I continue building it up, but I think now I'm going to try to do a spiral staircase in here. I'm going to do that with the roughly cut stone. We're going to go ahead and maybe start it right there. Let's see how this works. Um, Yeah, something like that, maybe. And then we could do... Let's see, one more like there. Maybe one like that. There we go. Now we're kind of getting somewhere. And that'll be able to build up. So again, one more there. And I think another one... Let's see. Here, here, and then... Up here, just like that. There we go. We have officially turned two corners, and I think that system is working well. I can kind of bring that out just a little bit there, too. We could even have a little hidden chest in here, like a little nature seating reading area or something with the way the vines are growing on these stairs, which I absolutely love. And then, yeah, we're already pretty much up at the top here where we need to be to kind of come right out into here. And I think, uh, yeah, I'll end up seeing how, uh, how I want to do, like, a little doorway. But that actually worked out perfectly. It's the perfect height, even, to have the little door here, come right up and around, and right out to here. So that's amazing. And I might even continue it up even farther to have, like, a little window in the tree, depending on how tall I end up making it. But I'm just going to keep uh, bringing this trunk up, place some scaffolding as I need, and just keep seeing how this goes. So it's looking pretty good now. I've got some more of the roots at the bottom here. Got the staircase platform here, a little door cut out. I also put some luminous, uh, some of the luminescent blocks down here. Uh, I just think that looks really cool. And then, yeah, you kind of wind up. I put a little window here, and on the top of the door and top and bottom of the window, I used the stone for the terraforming instead of the farm soil, just to make, like, the naughty look in the tree. Uh, with maybe a discoloration there, which I think looks really cool. And then I've just kind of started making these platforms for myself. Uh, since there's no gravity in this game, that I can just hop to and uh, work my way up the tree. And that seems to be easiest for me. And for this little section here, I'm starting to taper in. So I'm just using the little 1M cube. And we're just continuing up with that for a little bit. Just in a perfect square. And then I'm going to kind of delete the corner pieces out of it to round it after the fact. But this seems to be the most efficient on farm soil. You can see it still uses up so much farm soil. Uh, I've been trying to get a lot of it uh, made while I'm doing this project. But it seems to be efficient enough, but uh, still be able to have me control all the placements of things enough. Because I feel like using the really big terraforming pieces, uh, they just don't give me enough freedom to be able to... Uh, to try to control where I'm placing things. So we're getting pretty high up here now. We're about at the peak of the roof of the house, and I think it's time to start branching out. So again, I'm just gonna select the one meter cube, and I'm gonna try to like keep using these platforms and sort of like, I don't know, diagonally start bringing branches out, give them some, uh, 
some bit of beef and stuff later on, but I think this will work. And then, yeah, I can just kind of keep uh, making them a little fatter. This is actually working surprisingly well. Oh, that's all meshing together quite nicely. So, yeah, I'm just going to kind of do that, maybe in, like, three directions or something, and then just use, like, single terrain blocks to sort of branch out of them, and then we'll see what I could do for the leaves. All right, so I'm pretty happy with the branches now. I don't want it to be too big, and I think it's a pretty good size. So now for the leaves, I'm experimenting around with the flower soil here. And basically on the ends of these big branches, so like right out here, I'm taking like the little disc and uh, putting some flower soil down, just like that. And then I'm going up to the little guys and I'm placing a couple of these platforms around the area. Something like that, and then going up to the single terrain block and just kind of shaping the flower soil a little more. Giving it a little bit of uh, texture and things so it's not just a round patch. I'm almost thinking when I'm done with this I could plant some ferns or some plants on top of the flower soil uh, just to give it more of like a leafy feel. But either way, I think it pairs nicely with the farm soil here. If we go down to the bottom here, um... Yeah, it's definitely just kind of going to be a mossy looking tree. I love how the bark is kind of like gnarly and knotted and things. So it kind of fits the vibe, I think. And once I'm done with all the leaves, I think it'll fill out a little more. I can continue bringing some of the branches down a little bit, but it's turning out pretty good. So here is the tree looking pretty complete. It's still got a ways to go, I think, but I think it looks pretty good. Maybe I'd end up doing like a little stump in the future rather than a full tree or make it more of like a dead tree. But you know what? It's enshrouded. <laughs> and maybe this tree was like genetically changed or something from previously being in the shroud or whatever. And that's why it looks all funky because there's a lot of weird growth happening in the shroud. So I think it does kind of fit the environment and the vibe here. And uh, either way, I think it was a pretty cool thing to try. So now all that's left is to do a bunch of decorating on the interior, maybe do a little landscaping. And then we will do a full walkthrough and final showcase. Alright, so here is the build pretty much finished, or at least finished enough for the sake of this video. I'd love to continue working on it as I unlock better things later on in my playthrough series, because this is definitely my new favorite base so far. So with that, I hope you enjoy the little tour here. Starting off on the outside, I've just done some simple little plantings, some stones to accentuate the little pathways, little fences and little simple things to kind of add more interest to the terrain. I've also gone ahead and added some patches of this luminous growth here, which adds a really soft, passive lighting glow at nighttime, as well as some candles and things here and there. And you'll see the build at night here shortly, I'll be sure to show you all. But then I've got some uh, planter boxes out here up front, some indigo plants, and I might add some more farming patches down here uh, in the future when I have to be planting a lot more things. But with that said, let's take a look in the first larger hobbit home here. And this is a good place for the farmer. I've gone ahead and put Emily the farmer in here. And we've got a little tiny kitchen here. I might replace this fireplace here with her uh, better fireplace and kettle as I unlock that later on. But I'm really, really happy with this place. We've got the seed beds out front here with some light from the windows. They don't need the light, but I figure it was a cool spot to put them here. And then the flame altar where you spawn in at, a tiny little bedroom nook, and then we go into the tree trunk here where I've added some more luminous growth and terrain to kind of accentuate the infected and shrouded feel, assuming that this tree was sort of grown in the shroud and that's why it looks funky or something. <laughs> and then we've also got a little secret door here, just out of stone. I haven't unlocked the secret door that matches the rough cut stone here yet, but this one will do for now. We've got the hidden little chests here, a couple magic chests, and we continue up here. We've got a nice little window look out here, a little stool, and a chandelier up there for some soft light at nighttime. And then this is one of the ways up to the house, where you can go up the deck there and into the house. Uh, but then we'll go back down here, and I'll show you sort of the rest of this area. So we come through here, there's another secret door here which can be opened and closed. And then in here, you'll notice this soft blue glow in this little secret tunnel between the two hobbit houses. And this is because I hid some of the luminescent blocks underneath the stairs. 
So you don't see them, but they create a really nice glow here, just so you can see your way up the stairs. And then this here is the smaller hobbit house, which I've turned into the workshop for the carpenter. Uh, he's a short little fellow, and I figured he'd fit in this hobbit house just fine. I'll add his table saw and other things as I get those later on. Just added some grass and more growth sort of indoors, just to kind of add to the earthy feel. And again, that's what it's like on the outside there. And then this is the second way to head up into the cabin. So now we are in the cabin basement here, or the cellar. I've got a little corner for the huntress here. And then this is uh, Oswald's area for the blacksmith and crafting. I've gone ahead and phased some of the little fence pieces into the wall to create the windows and vents and stuff here for the basement because we had a little bit more exposed foundation in that area. And then I hope to line this entire back wall with a bunch of the magic chests for storage and building. So I don't have a lot of those yet, but that's the hope for future. Then we go ahead and head up this staircase. Again, I've got some of the luminescent blocks hidden underneath it. A little hard to see the glow here in the middle of the day, but they are there, and we go out into the kitchen of the main floor of the build here. Uh, and this is a cool spot, I thought, for the alchemist, because maybe we've got like a little juice bar here for the potions and things. So yeah, a slightly larger kitchen and fireplace. I've got the dining table over here, and I can't wait to unlock some better furniture. But in the meantime, I've gone ahead and built myself a little sofa and coffee table and little area in here just out of blocks uh, before I can unlock some better stuff, but I think it turned out pretty well. It's got a cute little cozy feel. A little entryway here where you can uh, take off your shoes at the bench and things. And uh, here's the little deck again. And then heading it to the loft, which is currently the bedroom and bathroom for the little build. So I've got a little table here we could deck it out more later on. But a tiny little fireplace here in the corner just to add some warmth to the bedroom for a uh, higher comfort. A little desk over here for some reading and art or things. And then you could put two beds side by side or do it the way I did it here with just one bed and a little nightstand there. And I think it turned out really well. And then heading through this door, this is a little bathroom here. And I think the uh, little vanity objects and stuff here fit really nicely. We've just got the little toilet, little counter space, the sink a candle and the tub, and it's actually kind of cozy in here at nighttime if you want to do like an evening bath or something, assuming they ever uh, let us interact with furniture and things, which I'd love to be added at some point, but yeah, very very tiny, but I think it works well to be a little bathroom off the bedroom there. So then if we head all the way down, the last thing I want to show you all is the tree here in a little more detail. I've added a little grapple point up there so you can get up here from the ground and uh, walk along the branches and things and jump across the leaf patches and stuff, which I just think is so much fun. I've added a little candle to each one of these leaf patches so that at night it adds a super soft glow. And uh, it's just really, really cool to hang out up here. So with that said, let's do a tour of how the build looks at nighttime from the outside. So here it is at nighttime in the dark forest of Revelwood. I love how these larger torches here just provide a bunch of light for the yard out here. And yeah, you can see how the luminous growth here just provides like soft glow outside, just adds some interest to the terrain there. So, and then yeah, just placing those little candles throughout on the pathways and things. I think it's beautifully lit outside. You can see looking up at the tree here, how all the little candles up there are uh, providing some of the light. Nothing too harsh, but just super simple, super soft. And I just love how it looks. I love how the luminous, uh, or the luminescent blocks and the growth here are lighting up the little caps of the indigo plants here. So I've placed two little hidden ones back there, and then some luminous growth here, and I just love how that looks. And then it also creates the blue fog back here, almost looking like it's the shroud in the distance there, if we look at it from over here, which I just love. It goes nicely with the, with the golden light from the torches here. And then, yeah, nice little cozy lighting inside the tree here with that chandelier. And then uh, here's what it's like to be on top of the tree at night. I put a couple of little uh, luminous growth uh, pieces over there. And then you can just sit over here. I could even put like a little stool or chairs or things on these little branches. But it's just like a little fairyland up here. It's really cool. So yeah, I'm just so happy with the way it turned out. And the inside is lit nicely, nice and cozy and everything like you saw before. So with that said, I do hope you enjoyed this build. I had so much fun with it. It's definitely one of my favorites. If you'd like to download it as well, be sure to join my membership here on YouTube or through Patreon in the link in the description. 
And a huge thanks to all of my current channel members. Be sure to join the Discord server as well through the link in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.